Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project The Course. This is video number 16 in the series and we're going to be looking at the calendar view today. If you haven't been following along, you can find a listing of all the other courses down below in the description. You can also find links to start point files so you can follow along with the start point files and download them. Uh, so that really increases your learning with Microsoft Project if you're able to follow along or you can just passively watch and try and figure out the things you need to know. Maybe you're after a specific answer to a question or something along that line. So I'm a professor of construction management and I've taught tens of thousands of people over the years on project management and I've used Microsoft Project in the teaching uh, quite uh, frequently. So we'll start off and we'll look at the calendar view. We have this start point file as I mentioned and it's a pretty rudimentary file. It's the classroom remodel. If you've been in it from the beginning you've worked on it and set it up, right? Um, so we have the different levels on this uh, schedule with a work breakdown structure here, level one, level two, you open them up and you can see we've got level three uh, here and just opening it up more further. And so we have our Gantt chart at the right and we've done a few things. We've created a resource sheet. So if I slide to the left and I go to the resource sheet, uh, we've created a resource sheet with a variety of resources. If I click on the square icon uh, button here, which is right here, I can right click and I can go to the cost screen and we can see what we've costs we've applied to the individual uh, trades or resources that we're using on this particular project. Uh, we've also haven't set a baseline on this example one that I'm using because it doesn't show a baseline cost. We have done that in ones in the past. So this particular one that I'm using doesn't have a baseline on it yet. Uh, so and you can always tell that when that's zeroed out and variances have the same costs over here. I'm going to slide to the left now and go back to the Gantt chart. And we've applied a lot of these resources, as I said, um, to the various activities. And you can see them listed uh, down here, not to everything, but to quite a few of them. Uh, so we have a good idea of resources that have been applied. And you notice, uh, like for example, drywall sub comes up quite frequently in this particular case. Uh, so they've been applied a number of times. And of course, in our Gantt chart, as we were talking about in the previous video, which was how to develop a short-term look-ahead schedule and filter for that, filtering is a really helpful tool to be able to narrow down what you're looking at. And so we, in that particular case, filtered for a number of weeks in a particular date range. And we did that by going to the project tab, oops, the format tab, nope, the view tab, uh, and filtering. And so we would go to filter and we went to date range and we filtered based on uh, dates that we wanted to see um, going on. So we, we were able to narrow it down to a specific range, like say we wanted to start May 8th and we click OK and then we wanted to finish uh, so let's go one, two, three, four, five. Let's say that we wanted to go to the end of there and we go June 9th and then it just filters out for that specific area, those activities that cross between those dates, right? And that's, that's really nice, that's really handy. And we could also, of course, say no filter, get it all back. So that's important to remember if you do filter something. And we filtered for resource. Okay, so this is where we're going to get into tying it to today's um, information. You know, we filtered this by resource for the, let's say, the actual drywall sub. We click OK, and we see all the activities that the drywall sub is going to be doing. And so that's great. So we know what activities they're going to be doing, when they're supposed to start, and when they're supposed to finish those specific activities. So that's good. And it looks like we've got them there pretty straightforward amount of time. We might want to question ourselves what goes on in that blank period of time here. You know, do they have to leave and then they have to remobilize? What's what's the deal going on there? So we might want to look at that a little bit. But we've got that filtered out. Great. Problem is the drywall sub isn't too good at looking at, you know, Gantt charts. It kind of confuses them and 
um, it's difficult to discuss things with them because maybe they're not that advanced um, from that perspective. A lot of trades would be, uh, but maybe they're not. And so I found that uh, site supers very often like to be able to uh, filter for a particular trade, but also to be able to show them in a different view, like a calendar. Everybody kind of knows what a calendar looks like, right? And so if I slide to the left, and I right click with my mouse here all the way to the left and I go to the calendar view. And of course you could also, if you, you know, you could also pull down this Gantt chart, oops, on the, usually when it's over here, it'll show you under the task tab, it'll show you the same listing. But as I've said before, just sliding to the left, because it doesn't matter what screen you're in, you will get to that same listing. So we're gonna go to calendar view and so now we can see things in a calendar uh, format. And so we can sort of move through things and get an idea of what's going on when. And so by looking at the different months here, February, uh, I think we're getting to the near the beginning of this. There's nothing there in December. All right, so we've got this basically apply for permit. And then this is what's following the calendars by days, right? Um, and you can see this has everything that goes on. So like on certain weeks, you can see you've got a number of trades on site during that week. So that's great. Uh, it's showing by the month right now. So we've got, you know, we clicked by the month. You can, you know, you could show it by the week and you could click on what's going on this coming week if you wanted to um, look at it from that perspective, see who's gonna be on site and just scroll through it by clicking. Um, so that, that can be done. Uh, easily enough you can go back to the month you can also go custom so you can go custom and you can say how many weeks do you want to see at a time right so you could change this to show six weeks and so now you can see six weeks here uh, from that format and of course maybe i don't want to see six weeks maybe i prefer to see four that's very frequently what you like uh, that's helpful now going back just to show you a little bit more here so you've got all of this here. You can go to file and you can go to print and then it'll show you the calendar view. And so then you can print, you know, you can print the number of months that you this project crosses over. So that's likely seven months here, well, pages one to seven. Uh, you can give it a date range that you want it to print for. So you can print it from a particular date range so that you don't have as much perhaps. So, you know, maybe you just want a particular from let's say from uh, January 31st to uh, February 28th, something like that. So you could give it like, uh, you just wanna see that month uh, period in there. So you can, you can do all of that when you're, when you're actually setting up to print. So that's why it came up in the calendar view this way. Now let's carry that a little bit forward. And let's say uh, you don't wanna, because if I manage my project, to be honest, I don't want it in this view. It's not my thing, uh, but uh, for, as I said, for some trades, it may be their thing. So you always want to try to figure out what's the easiest way to communicate things. So I'm going to go to the view. I'm going to go to filter, and I'm going to filter this by a particular resource again. So you learned that when we did the, the aspect of developing a short-term look ahead, and you, or if you just want to filter something for a particular resource uh, in the Gantt chart, you could do that. As I just showed you earlier. Well, maybe we want to look at a particular resource in this view. And so I'm going to go drywall sub. And so now I can scroll through the months and I can see, you know, they got nothing in January. Okay, so their first time that they come on site is on the 28th of February. And you could print this setting, right? So you could go file and you could go print. And you could basically print again for the number of months of the project, or you could do a date range, and you would get all of the all of the work that they're doing. It's not showing anything here because we filtered for uh, the drywall sub, so they're not doing anything in January. But you can get all of the months printed, or just whatever months you want, like February, March, April, May. If those are the months that they're there, you could print for those particular months. Uh, and you can see that's where there was that gap there of days. 
And if you're going to meet with them, you can have a discussion with them. You could print it out and you could say, okay, we're going to sit down and we're going to discuss this. You could send them a copy uh, of it uh, and, you know, print it to a PDF, uh, send them a copy of it, however you prefer to do that. Uh, and they would better understand it. They would better understand it if they're really not too intuitive at understanding a Gantt chart. So it can be very helpful uh, resource that way. So you always got to look at, as I said, you know, who am I communicating this information to and what's the best way to do it? For a lot of trades, it's to have the calendar and maybe to have the drawings and then a highlighter and going over the zones that they're going to be working out of or doing it on a digital sheet and you know the drawings and maybe with something like Bluebeam highlighting the different zones that they would be working in while discussing the dates that they will be working and again having the calendar there uh, can be helpful as a tool to look at it. Now of course if we want to get out of calendar view we can just slide to the left right click go to Gantt chart and we're back in the Gantt chart. Nothing is filtered. You see no filter, no filter. We go back into the calendar view and um, we're still, I think, uh, let's see. I think it's still, no, I think it's got, it's lost that, yeah. I think everything's back here. So we, we're out of the filter. But again, you want the filter using resource and doing the uh, drywall sub, there we go and it filters it for you, okay? So, very helpful. These tools are way underused, I feel, these filtering tools. There's a lot of things that gets way underused in um, our projects and with Microsoft Project. You've, you put all this data into this, so you should make sure that you take advantage of it where it makes sense, where it makes sense. So I've just been trying to show you over the last few sessions some different ways of using the data that's in the tool and mining it to your benefit. It's, you've already went through the trouble of putting it in. You should really try to make sure that you utilize it so that it plays to your benefit. Well, that's what I wanted to cover today. I'm hoping everybody gets to utilize that uh, bit of information and we'll see you on the next one. Uh, if you haven't subscribed already, please click the subscribe icon. Don't forget you can download this file and you can uh, try things on it. Don't forget if you wanna go right back to the beginning of knowing all the basics, we start off right from video number one at the very, very basics and you can uh, download the file to work on and you can create the file to work on and so on and so forth. So I'm Tom Stevenson wishing you a wonderful day and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.